What's going on, guys? This is Shin and Kai, and before I even begin, first and foremost, I'm going to apologize for it taking so long to get this review posted to YouTube. The bottom line is that life has been really busy for me, and I haven't really had the time to sit back and enjoy things like filming various product reviews. But with that being said, I'm here right now, and I'm really excited to talk about the Forces of Valor 1x700 scale Yamato Battleship. Now, as usual, I'm going to go over the history of the ship before I talk about the actual model. And bear in mind, guys, I'm going completely off of memory here, so if I get something wrong, do not hesitate to correct me in the comments section because it wouldn't be the first time I got something wrong. <laughs> Anyways, with that being said, let's get right to it. And as most of you already know, the Amato was the largest battleship ever made. I mean, this thing was just absolutely massive, and it wasn't really the length that was impressive. I mean, it was around 863 feet in length and around 128 feet wide, um, which is impressive, but it didn't make it the longest battleship in the world. But it was just so massive. It was just heavy. It weighed in at 72,000 tons, and it carried nine 18-inch guns, which are the largest guns that were ever mounted on a battleship. So, I mean, this ship could hit hard, and not only could it hit hard, but it could take a lot of damage. Its armor was just ridiculously thick. And this ship was essentially designed to take on multiple American battleships all at once. And the most impressive thing about this, in my opinion, is that this ship was designed in relative secrecy. And the whole story here is that... This ship is almost a direct result of the Washington Naval Treaty, which limited battleships to 35,000 tons, and it really kind of put the arm behind the backs of a lot of nations in terms of what they could build. So, at the time, Japan's fleet was pretty old. In fact, most of the battleships that took place in World War II were actually from the World War I-ish era. So Japan, instead of making a whole bunch of 35,000 ton battleships, decided to, in secret, produce this mega battleship that would be able to take on multiple targets at once. So it is just this wonderful achievement, not only in just engineering, but also in secrecy. I mean, the United States knew of the Yamato's existence, but they had no idea how big the ship truly was. And that's a pretty impressive feat. Now, the Yamato... And just like your sister shipped in Masashi, didn't really have this kind of storied uh, history that I think Japan was hoping for when they were first made. In fact, there wasn't really too many instances of them being able to use their main batteries. For the most part, the hotel, or <laughs> the hotel, I got ahead of myself there. For the most part, the Yamato and the Musashi were actually referred to as Hotel Yamato and Hotel Musashi because for most of their life, they actually served as a transport vehicle for troops and different things of that sort. But there was at least one instance to where the Yamato got to see some action and got to fire her big guns, and that was the famous Battle of Samar if I'm saying that correctly. And it's a very fascinating battle. If you guys don't know about it, it's, uh, it's, it's really one worth reading. Anyways, in this encounter, the Yamato was able to fire off some guns at the, uh, at a light American fleet and even scored a hit on the light aircraft carrier, the Gambier Bay. And I'm probably saying that incorrectly too. <laughs> Anyways, uh, there was a torpedo attack on the Yamato, though, and in order to avoid the torpedoes, she pretty much had to maneuver out of combat position, and she never really re-engaged. And that was pretty much her only time of being able to fire her guns against another ship. Now, there was a time to where she was heavily damaged by a submarine, a U.S. submarine, and I think it was in 1943 on Christmas Day. I don't have too much information with regards to where she was hit, but apparently it did some pretty extensive damage and she needed to go in for repairs. Otherwise, she'd be most famous for, unfortunately, her destruction, which was when she was sent to Okinawa on a kamikaze mission. And, you know, there's a lot of different reports as to how many bombs and torpedoes she took. Some people say, or some sources say it was 12 bombs and 7 torpedoes, and others have it the exact reverse. But, no matter what, it's neither here nor there. This ship fought hard, and it took a lot to get her down. And when she did go down, apparently when she sank, her magazine exploded, and you could see the magazine for... Uh, or the explosion for hundreds of miles away. And I believe there are even reports that you could hear it from southernmost mainland Japan. So anyways, that's going to be the history of the Yamato. I've kind of rambled off for a bit there. Now let's talk about the models. 
And this is going to be the original model from Forces of Valor in a very uh, familiar historic color scheme. And they just, they did such a great job with the model. The quality control is absolutely astounding. I'd love, of course, the die cast hull on the bottom, or at least below the waterline. It gives it a very uh, solid feel to it. And overall, this is just a wonderful model. I think it really does a great job of communicating just how badass the Yamato really was. And I have no complaints. I think one can complain that the plane here doesn't have any detail whatsoever. It's just uh, a plastic green painted aircraft but you know what it does the job and the other model I have over here is going to be again of the Yamato and I think they called it Operation Tengo which is the mission for Okinawa but I don't have any sources that indicate that this is what the Yamato looked like during that fateful mission and in a way I don't really care because I love this paint scheme it gives it a more modern ish look and it just looks so amazing to me. I mean, this just looks like a ship you do not want to screw with. And of course, in real life, you definitely didn't want to unless you're in a plane with hundreds of other planes. <laughs> but uh, this is a very cool model. And the paint scheme, I absolutely love the mix of grays here with the uh, yellow accents on the turrets. And the plane here actually has the canopy painted. So otherwise... This is just an absolutely exceptional model. Quality control is fantastic. Honestly, I love these models because I couldn't do any better. I'm not an excellent model builder, and unless you just have a natural talent, it's going to take a lot of money and resources before you can paint something like this yourself, at least in my opinion, or if you're as <laughs> unskilled as I am. But otherwise, guys... I think Forces of Valor did a great job with these models. That's my take on this. And I suppose this will lead me to my absolute final thoughts on these Forces of Valor models. All right, guys, so that's pretty much it for my Forces of Valor 1x700 scale model reviews. Unfortunately, it looks like the company is no longer going to be making these models, at least as far as I know, which is a shame. But you know what? I had a great time talking about these things. And I'm very happy to actually own these wonderful models. Hopefully you guys out there enjoy yours. And if you don't have some, there's still a few e-tailers out there that are selling them for pretty reasonable prices. So I definitely jump on it. Especially if you're like me and your modeling skills aren't that great or you're just flat out impatient. If that's the case, then these actually represent pretty good value. Anyways, I hope that we see something else like this either from Unimax slash Forces of Valor or even from another company. I know Eagle Moss has some, I think it's 1x1200 or so scale ships, which is pretty cool. But I really like the 1x700 scale. Hopefully somebody else will take the torch. Meanwhile, guys, thanks for watching my videos, and I look forward to posting up more, albeit unrelated content. Until then, peace.